Hey guys, my name's Nick. Hey guys, my name's Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I created a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering enrolling Windows devices into Intune. Before I do, if you guys want to see a lot of content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Getting into it here though, I did want to create this video because there's a lot of complexity around how you enroll devices into Intune. There's a lot of methods for enrollment on the Azure AD side, and that has downstream effects into what your deployment might look like for Intune uh, based off of that authentication that they're doing to their devices. And a lot's changed recently in the sense of actually making this process a little bit easier. And I think that's when I think that's been one of the biggest pain points when you think about moving to a solution like Intune. The enrollment process isn't exactly easy from the standpoint of getting all devices to enroll in an in, you know, easy bulk deployment, I would say, compared to what you might be used to in the sense of an RMM tool and being able to push that out in a package to all of your devices and having all the devices enroll in that regard. So one of the main benefits that I've seen recently uh, that you can do as well is enroll the devices via the thick applications as in the desktop applications like Teams and Outlook for instance and it just requires the user to sign in if you configure the settings in the endpoint admin center correctly. So let's go ahead and pop into a little demo real quick here to showcase that and we'll be back into the main content here afterwards. So we're here on the device and I'm going to go ahead and sign, just sign into Teams with the user here who's licensed with Intune, it's M365 Business Premium. We'll be prompted for MFA. And now you see that it's giving us this checkbox to allow the organization to manage this device. So you can select OK here. And this is actually taking us through the enrollment process versus having to do that on the Access Worker School account section that you normally would have to go to. So it's incorporating this into actually signing in to these thick applications that you've downloaded on the particular tenant or desktop. And here you'll see that it successfully has now enrolled this device in the MDM solution and the launch teams afterwards here. Back in the Endpoint Manager Admin Center here, I can go back to the devices and I can simply try to refresh the page here to see if that device is coming through. It doesn't look like it's come through yet, so I'll wait just a couple minutes here and I'll be right back. Back here in the portal now, I see that I have this particular device pulled up and it's listed as personal. On the device here though, I can see all of the areas where it's managed by my company and I can see my policies coming down, my applications coming down, everything that you would normally be used to via MDM enrollment. Okay, so I'll be getting into exactly how you configure those settings within the Endpoint Manager Admin Center. I just wanted to go through quickly here some of the fundamentals I think that you need to fully understand in order to better prepare your architecture for your client in which you're going to roll out to them in the sense of policy configuration and thinking of how you're going to join these devices into Azure AD or register them. So the big piece here is having devices joined versus registered and this has been a common confusion I think for many years but uh, fundamentally with registered devices they basically don't require uh, Azure AD is, is uh, authentication for the particular device itself. So it's saying, hey, I know of you being in 365, but this device doesn't require Azure AD authentication to access uh, your profile on that device. So that could be something like I have my own personal laptop or a BYOD device in which I use my own personal user profile, but it's still recognizing that I have a user within Azure Active Directory that has access to corporate resources. Azure AD joined and Hyper Azure AD joined are two in which they uh, basically are the opposite. So they, they are looking for authentication on the device to come from Azure Active Directory. And I've done another video on hybrid Azure AD join for the configuration piece there though. Uh, but that is kind of like the prerequisite from the Intune connector to all the settings that you have to 
configure locally on your DC in order for that to correctly work and register devices in that manner. But basically with those enrollment methods, uh, there's a couple of considerations we have to take in when we think of how a particular device is labeled as corporate versus personal whenever it's enrolled into Intune. So the big difference here is that in order for it to be corporate, it's got to be Azure AD joined or hybrid Azure AD joined in order for it to register in that regard when it pushes up into Intune after enrollment. And a lot of these ways you can do this is from the UB experience if you've set up their profile to uh, basically have access to Azure AD. And you can do it with uh, net new deployments in, in the sense of autopilot profiles and being able to push out those profiles to users. So that way when they get their new devices or you get them from an OEM provider, uh, they are able to boot up and sign in and they'll be Azure AD joined out of the box. Hybrid Azure AD joined, they have to have a line of sight to the domain controller or now most recently they can also VPN because of remote work to the domain controller to join their device and that will hybrid join that into Azure AD as well. For personal, obviously personal devices, just in general, like I mentioned there, are in consideration for when it gets registered that way. But a device could also be domain joined, but not hybrid joined, and that would still register it as a personal device in Intune. So the big reason I, I bring that up is, is really related to, as an MSP, how many devices do you want to manage? And a lot of MSPs have expressed that we don't want everybody just joining their personal devices into MDM because I'm not going to manage that for them. We've built out a contract and I'm only supporting corporate devices. So I want a better method of being able to funnel those in from an MDM perspective. The other big piece here is I mentioned, there's been um, some mode of a shift, I would say, in the sense that you can now access and enroll devices in the MDM solution, get all the policies pushed down, applications, configuration profiles, just by the user signing into one of their thick applications, desktop clients, versus having to go into settings, access worker school, and try to connect the account uh, via that method. It's a little bit more confusing for them to understand how to do that. You could also do you know, the corporate uh, ownership in enrolling that via the, the um, company portal app, but that's again, I feel like a little bit more complex. So for the tenant configuration here, for the proposal uh, that I wanted to mention, I think there's a couple of different things to take into consideration just in general. So number one here, you want to configure your auto enrollment settings to basically have MDM scope to all users, but then turn off the MAM policy or configuration for that. And I'll be showing you that here in a second. That basically allows the user to go ahead and enroll that device via MDM via the thick client versus having to do it via the access worker school section. And in not doing so, you would prevent them from actually enrolling in MDM. And I'll be able to show you that here in the demo as well too. I also recommend configuring the enrollment restrictions within the Endpoint Admin Center to accept corporate devices only. So this way you don't have any personal owned devices enrolling in the MDM. And to supplement that for security and compliance reasons, you would wanna create an app protection policy uh, for the windows without enrollment, or you could also create a conditional access policy where the device compliance has to be healthy in order to access corporate applications. And so with this, you're, you're getting some protection here. One, on the, the standpoint of basically being able to just manage the corporate owned devices and not have to worry about people enrolling their personal devices and getting help desk calls about those devices. And two, you're getting security and compliance with app protection policies by not allowing them to move that data, download it locally, copy and paste to non-trusted quote unquote applications, basically that you are defining. Um, and those would just be corporate owned applications, which includes things like Outlook, Excel, all of that with their corporate profile. So that's pretty powerful and obviously conditional access policies. Um, they would require the devices to be enrolled into Intune with a healthy status as well too, in order to access corporate data. And so in that example I showed earlier, it basically would restrict that user if their device wasn't compliant from accessing the Teams application that they were trying to sign into, if that was in fact you know a corporate owned device in that particular case. 
it might be best to create a conditional access policy with a one day grace period just to give it time for it to actually detect this as a, as a healthy device. Because I feel like the user experience is a little bit better that way versus getting denied immediately um, in the sense of they enroll, they try to access Teams, the device isn't compliant right away, and they get blocked from doing so. And that might just be a message you could send like, hey, it's going to take like, you know, 15 minutes before you will be able to access this application or something like that. But it is good to know from an end user experience standpoint. The other piece here is you can, if you wanted to, you could allow all device ownership types, so personal and BY or and corporate, and you would just have the understanding that maybe you've had a contract where you're saying I don't support these devices, but they're going to get all my policy configurations and applications for um, EDR solutions and, and things of that nature for complete protection of the stack. In that particular case, you don't necessarily need the app protection policies um, because you'd still be trying to look for devices that are healthy with the conditional access policy to prevent them from accessing corporate data. Um, but it does allow more flexibility in the sense that you don't have to have the devices hybrid joined or Azure AD joined. They could just be registered devices and that wouldn't prevent somebody from, from blocking that uh, enrollment process. So those are a couple of the considerations in a, in a more visual aspect. We can think of the end to end, right? The new devices that you get can be purchased through the OEM provider and, and funneled into Windows Autopilot. And in doing so, they can sync over profiles you've created and you can sync the devices into Intune so that whenever you ship that device to the end user, they can boot up and they immediately have their self-deployment uh, going on and Intune can then deploy all of the profiles, the configuration policies, your RMM software, your Office 365 apps, things like that. And from there, you can then also think about the other side of this, which is configuring your on-prem AD, if you're still running a hybrid environment, for the hybrid uh, deployments so that you can also push out local group policy to those devices maybe if you're in a transition stage and also with that you can have a line of sight for these users that are remote potentially to the DC or you configure it with a VPN so that they can connect to the on-prem environment as well too and this way from that standpoint they're going to become hybrid joined this is all with the intention in mind that corporate owned get the MDM policies versus personally owned can still get the application protection policies so that they can access corporate data still uh, versus not having any access whatsoever to give a little bit more flexibility. You might want to take a more restrictive approach though and basically just say if you have a personal device you, you can access corporate data on that device and you can configure conditional access policies accordingly. Uh, but a lot of cases, I think you're going to have a little bit more flexibility in that regard, but still want that protection, which the app protection policies can provide. So with that, let me pop into the admin center here to show you some of these configurations. Okay, I'm here within the Endpoint Manager Admin Center with a tenant here that has Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Business Premium comes with conditional access policies as in Azure AD P1 and it also comes with Intune. So a couple of the things that you'll want to do here under devices. First and foremost, you want to configure your auto enrollment settings here. And this is what I mentioned here. You'll be able to go ahead and set the MDM to all, and then you'll want to set this MAM user scope to none and click on save here. Otherwise you'll get an error, which I can show in a video right now. So here's an example, we're trying to sign in to the thick application here and the MAM policy for auto enrollment is actually still on. So you'll notice here I can sign in and I'll type in my password. And you'll notice the prompt here is the same as I had before in my previous example. But watch here if I try to click on OK. So we get this message here about something that went wrong and you'll notice it says that it couldn't be enrolled in the management solution. 
So you'll notice that is basically where it doesn't get enrolled in the MDM itself. And it is basically allowing them still to sign in to Teams, but didn't actually do anything from the enrollment standpoint. So getting back here in the admin center, ensure that this is set to none, if you'd like that to function accordingly. And from there, there's a couple of additional things that I mentioned that you'll probably want to do. One of which is restrict the enrollment of the devices here. If you go under the default one, you can create new ones and you can scope this. If you wanted to separate out per user as well to even get more granular. But essentially what we're doing here is we're modifying the platform section section to basically platform settings section, I should say, to block personally owned devices in the Windows category here. And this is in the case where you wouldn't want to actually support the troubleshooting or helpless calls surrounding their own personal devices. You have a policy with them, an agreement that says that I'm just going to be servicing the devices that are corporate owned and we'll be designating those, we'll keep an inventory of those and in no way are we supporting personally owned devices here. So that allows you to do that piece. And from there, if you really wanted them to still have access on their personal devices without having to enroll, you could create this app protection policy. I have videos about this to show you how to do that. And this allows you to block them from transferring this data to unmanaged applications. And that includes downloading files, cut, copy, paste, things like that. And the very last thing that you would want to take a look at as well, too, is actually if you went under the endpoint security and clicked on conditional access here. And here you would want to create a new policy in which you, one, if you wanted to do a model of most restrictive, you would just block access to non-compliant devices altogether to corporate data. Or if you wanted to mix this up a little bit, you could allow them to get access to healthy devices. Or you could say if they're personally owned devices that are registered, then you can uh, simply allow them to do so. But obviously you have your man policy in place if you wanted to put that in here as well too. So those are a lot of big pieces. I know this was kind of a longer video, but I just wanted to flesh that out for everybody and, and kind of give some clarity, I hope. Uh, to you guys as well. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, please like or subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks guys. Have a great day.